Hi everyone, my name is Zhixu, I'm from MIT. Today I'm going to present our work on non-asymptotic analysis of Monte Carlo tree search. This is a joint work with Deborah Shah from MIT and Chaoming Xie from Cornell. Reinforcement learning has been quite popular and successful recently, highlighted by impressive performance in various domains, such as Atari games, AlphaGo, and a strategy game like StarCraft. In particular, AlphaGo achieves superhuman performance in the game of Go, which is traditionally considered a hard artificial intelligence task. The success of AlphaGo has stimulated a lot of interest in reinforcement learning research. There seem to be two ingredients that are popular in some of the related algorithms. First, the use of Monte Carlo tree search to simulate and select an action. Second, Combining the simulation results with supervised learning, such as neural networks, to generalize the policy. In this work, we are curious about these two ingredients. Precisely, our goal is to provide some theoretical foundation towards a better understanding. To this end, we attempt to answer two questions. First, what is the appropriate form of Monte Carlo tree search so that the desired property? such as convergence and non-asymptotic guarantees hold. Second, when combining with supervised learning, what is the eventual finite sample performance? Let us start with some background. We will consider infinite horizon discounted MDP, which can be described by these five components. S and A are the state space and action space, respectively. P is the transition kernel which determines the probability of transitioning to S prime given the current state S and an action A. RSA is the reward we receive by playing action A. And we have a discounting factor gamma within zero and one. Particularly in this talk, we will be focusing on continuous compact state space. And without loose of generality, we'll assume that the state space is a D-dimensional cube. And we have a finite action space. The transition kernel is deterministic and unknown, and the reward is an unknown random variable. In this case, a policy pi maps state S to an action. A fundamental quantity of interest in reinforcement learning is the value function. Given a policy pi, the value function is defined as a discounted cumulative reward under that policy. Often we are interested in the optimal value function, that is the value at each state if one follows the optimal reward maximizing policy. In this talk, we focus on value-based reinforcement learning and our goal is to learn the optimal value function V star. So how do we estimate V star from data? Well, there are several approaches. For example, there are a variety of IR algorithms developed such as temporal difference style methods, Q-learning, and many more. Well, a simulator, or commonly referred as a generative model, is available. Monte Carlo tree search is an alternative method to estimate V-star that relies on simulating many future trajectories. MCTS achieves great empirical performance recently, serving as the main driving force of the performance in games of Go and Chess. However, the theory of this field is relatively limited. In this talk, we focus on the most popular variant, referred as up confidence tree. Now with this background, we formalize the previous questions we want to address. Technically, given a query state S, we would like to know whether MCTS, when properly designed, learns the optimal value of the query state or not. And if so, how many samples are required to learn a value for a fixed Gibson error? Finally, when coupled with sound supervised learning methods, can we obtain Gibson error for the entire state space? And also, how does the sample complexity scale with the desired error? We begin with Monte Carlo tree search. First, let's try to develop some intuition and an ideal scenario. Suppose we are given a root state S and would like to obtain an estimate of V star S. What can we do? 
Well, since we have a simulator, we can simulate it for one step to get an immediate reward, right? That means for each of the eight actions, we simulate each action for infinite number of times and we get an exact reward for one step. Now the total reward depends on the future actions. So naively, we can repeat this process for the next step, like depth two, and the next, next step as shown in this picture. This expands to a look ahead tree. This is great, but there are some issues. We cannot sample for infinite future. That is, we cannot really build an infinite depth tree. Also, we don't have infinite samples to spend at each stage to get an accurate estimate of the reward. We need to address these two issues to obtain a practical algorithm. Naturally, for the first issue, we truncate the process at some depth h. Since we want to simulate the future after depth h, we use a value function estimation to estimate the value of the leaf nodes. To address the second issue, we must be smarter about which action to sample at each stage instead of uniformly sample every action. Pictorially, for each simulation, we simulate one action at each stage, resulting in a length h path from the root to leaf. The information of this path should be back up to the nodes on this path, so that in the next simulation, the information could guide the selection of action to try, in the sense that one should pick the most promising action according to the past simulations. To summarize, the MCTS we consider is basically a combination of value iteration with multi-step look ahead plus smart sampling at each simulation. We sample each step to obtain relevant information and then allocate our finite budget so that actions that are unlikely to be optimal at each stage are visited less. That is, we need to balance exploration and exploitation, a classical trade-off in field like multi unbanded So the problem now is that at each step during the simulation, how to select an action to explore? Forget about the tree structure for a moment. Let's just focus on one stage. And then as shown in the picture, this is basically a multi unbanded problem. In particular, we can use the up confidence bound style algorithms. We keep an empirical value for each edge and a boundless term that reflects the probabilistic concentration. To balance the exploration and exploitation, the action with the highest up confidence bound, that is the highest empirical value plus the boundless, is selected. This all works fine with just one depth. However, within the tree, the boundless term becomes pretty tricky. Should we use a boundless term that is logarithmic in T, the total number of simulations so far, or a polynomial boundless term? Well, if we assume independence of reward across stage of the MCTS tree, then basically the classical result suggests a boundless term that scales as square root log T over M. In particular, the dependence on T is logarithmic. This is implied by the exponential concentration inequalities. However, there is a problem. This is not true in our simulation tree. The reward at an immediate depth depends on the regret of MAB for the node a layer below. And those a layer below depends on the next layer and so on. In effect, this creates complicated dependence on the subtree below. To use the logarithmic bound as suggested, it would require exponential concentration for regret at each depth, which is unlikely to hold in general. Indeed, an overlook of this issue leads to an incomplete proof with a naive logarithmic choice. In this work, we formally show that the dependence should be polynomial, and in particular, the bonus term should scale like square root of root t over n. With this, we now state our main theoretical guarantee for MCTS. Recall that for each simulation, we simulate up to each step and then we use a value function estimator to evaluate the leaf node. 
formally, suppose that we have a value function estimator for the lifts such that the arrow is within epsilon. Then after any simulation of MCTS with the depth H tree, we obtain an improved estimate for the loot node. The arrow is bounded by gamma to the H times epsilon plus the term that scales as one over square root n. So if we have enough simulations for MCTS, the second term vanishes. We briefly mentioned a proof, which amounts to solve non-stationary MABs that could be of independent interest. We call that the central challenges are the dependence and non-stationarity of the tree. We, we in fact have a hierarchy of MABs where each intermediate node depends on the nodes below. And the, hence, the reward of each arm is not stationary. The core of the proof is to define a suitable class of non-stationary MAB for the nodes that capture the dynamics. Then we use recursive arguments to show that in some sense, the desired property propagates from the leaf to the layers above with properly chosen bonus term. Precisely, our inductive hypothesis is a polynomial concentration of a regret, as shown in the slide. And we show that inductively, if we use the polynomial bonus that scales as square root, root t over n, then the polynomial concentration indeed holds at each stage of the tree. We common that the paper provides more general results on this polynomial concentration and the corresponding bonus term. This particular choice is given by setting one for the parameter eta to be one half, which allows for a clean result. Interestingly, the successful application AlphaGo0 also uses polynomial bonus, which scales as square root t over n. And this is basically the square of our theoretically suggested polynomial bonus. Now that we have guarantees for MCTS, we can study how it performs when combined with supervised learning. Recall that for each state S, we have shown that we can query MCTS to obtain improved estimates. With this, of course, we can repeat for finitely many states, which leads to a training data with the sample state being the features and the outputs from MCTS being the response. Since we only do this for finitely many states, we need to generalize to unseen states in a continuous space. However, this is easy. With the training data, we can treat this as a supervised learning task. In particular, one can use any learning algorithm that generalizes well. For example, in practice, one could use neural networks. For this theoretical work, we focus on non-parametric nearest neighbor method because we don't need to make specific model assumption and the algorithm is well understood. This allows us to focus on the essentials of this overall approach. To summarize, we have this iterative algorithm where at each iteration, MCTS used previous value function estimator to evaluate the lib nodes. We query finitely many states to obtain a training data and then generalize to the entire space using nearest neighbor. The newly learned value function estimator will then be used at the next iteration. Theoretically, we prove that after running L iterations of MCTS plus nearest neighbor algorithms with appropriately chosen parameters, we can obtain an estimate of the optimal value such that its L infinity error is within epsilon. The overall sample complexity to achieve this scales as one of epsilon to the four plus D. To get some intuition on this result, we have in total L iteration. Roughly speaking, each iteration requires one of epsilon D plus two MCTS cores to obtain a suitable training data. And for each query of the MCTS Oracle, we need to simulate roughly speaking one over epsilon square uh, times. This gives us the overall sample complexity. We remark that in this setting, there is a lower bound that scales as one of epsilon d plus two. Let's summarize our contributions of this work. 
to show the correct property of MCTS, we define suitable non-stationary MAB and show that the recursive polynomial concentration in the simulation tree indeed hold. This leads to a corrected up-confident tree algorithm with precise non-asymptotic analysis for the query node. Next, by combining with supervised learning, we show that this overall approach, which has enjoyed great empirical performance, indeed succeeds in learning the optimal value function. Finally, as in successful practical applications, our theoretical result argues that a polynomial boundness instead of the logarithmic one should be used. This is all of the presentation. Thank you for listening.